everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and I am back at Brickworld Indy, and I'm about to give you a tour of the whole show floor here at Brickworld Indy. So once again, we've come back for the third or fourth year in a row and wanted to cover all these models for you here. There's always some great stuff on display at this show. Some of it you'll have seen before, so some of it I might not spend as long on if it's if we've shown it to you in past videos, but there's some great new stuff as well that we'll definitely make sure to focus on. Starting next to me here is a really cool zoo build, and this was built built by actually a husband-wife team. Uh, you can actually see their sig figs and their family sitting here with the, the girl with the purple balloon and then the parents there. Uh, that's the family that, that built this. And this is I love this build because uh, the tiles give it a really nice finished look throughout the whole build. And then they've also got all the different areas with animals from all over the world, bears and elephants and camels and monkeys and everything else you would expect to see in a zoo. Uh, they've even incorporated the carousel there in the back right corner because it had all the animals and so it was a perfect fit for a zoo. So I, re I really like this build. If we keep moving around the corner here, uh, we come to a couple more friends. You can see that even some custom tablecloths here. We've got some some friends builds, so very, very friends related colors and everything and the, the mini dolls. Uh, you can see the Friends characters on the, the lake there, out fishing, the treehouse. Uh, then you've got the horses and the stables over here. And then over here we actually have another zoo. So this is kind of the zoo corner of the show. And once again, all sorts of cool animals. I like the giraffes here and the zebras. If you look closely at the zebras, that's actually uh, Lego horses with uh, black lines added. So that's some cool kind of custom technique just to, to give that zebra look there for the zoo. And then you've got sort of a cable car going across the top there. And then this next display here, uh, and this was done by Scott Wright who did those last couple displays as well. Uh, is a giant Pirates of the Caribbean inspired display and so you can see the Black Pearl, uh, the big fort there, and all of the stuff that the island here, you can see Jack Sparrow on the inside of the island. So all different scenes and ships uh, inspired by Pirates of the Caribbean uh, on display here and he lowered this build, uh, you can see he's all the way on the ground in order for kids to get a better view of it so you'll, you'll notice that Throughout the show, there's a few different spots where people have kind of put their builds lower or on the ground in order for kids to see them easier. And then over here, we've got a bat cave and lots of neat details. Looks like they've got an iPad in here to be able to play some stuff when the, the public is in here. Obviously, right now, there is no public in here, and that's why it's so quiet, because we're doing this after the public hours have ended. So it's a lot easier to walk around and show you all of the builds. Coming down here, we have what could be a Gotham City, judging by all the carnage going on here from all of the different heroes and villains fighting it out in the city. So you've got Bane there, Clayface, Killer Croc, the Riddler, you name it. It looks like they're they're in, involved in this fight. Next to that is just a Lego cube, which I actually think is really cool. If anyone has an extra one of these lying around, we'd be happy to put it in the studio at Beyond the Brick. Feel free to reach out. Fire hydrant. Here's a cool square and sort of a mathematical square dissection done with Lego bricks. I like that. And then a stoplight here as well. So you don't see those every day with Lego. I, I think that's a pretty cool design. So we'll keep moving this direction and just make our way through all the different rectangles and the different themes. This has kind of a, you've got Arkham Asylum here as well as a big castle layout. I love all the medieval stuff in here. The caves, the purple and black mix is really cool. The spiral staircase going up there. Batman standing on top. Works well with the Arkham Asylum and even some of the brick heads there for the Batman characters. So you've got all sorts of stuff in there. Here we've got a Star Wars layout. Looks like this kind of merges some custom builds and some Star Wars kits. The big battle happening out front here. And then moving down from that is some giant giant models here. These are all kind of truck inspired, uh, construction truck inspired, and lots of detail. The chrome especially, the way that curves and tiles are done to give it a very refined look. I, I really like that. 
then Palm City, so an imaginary small town with a setting in the tropics, and you've got lots of palm trees, got a nice little uh, building there, it looks like maybe a cafe or something along those lines, got a fire department there. I, I really the palm tree designs I think are what stand out the most to me there. I really like that. And here's the Palm County Courthouse, so the more of the city all along here with more of those uh, palm inspired houses. And then here's some Palm Estates. So this is I guess the suburbs with the houses here. You get away from the city. The offset designs are really cool, kind of the raised offset designs there. Yeah, these are just very impressive models. One thing you'll notice here, a lot of these displays have can you find, and so it's kind of a way to get the public interacting with the build is looking for certain characters, minifigs, animals, whatever it might be, uh, cool, little, cool little Easter eggs uh, to find in, in builds. So here you've got a city layout. I really like the, the waterfall with the wind turbines on top. I think that's a cool detail. Moving around the corner here, we continue on. So that's a very, that area was a very nice mix of a bunch of different themes sort of, uh, as well, similar situation with this area. So you start out with some city here, but we'll see some other stuff. You got the diner. So that diner was just recently released. Excellent build, brought back teal. I think everyone's very happy with that. Next to that, we have this layout with uh, you got like a rock concert going on in the back corner. Uh, you've got a lot of amusement park type rides, a roller coaster in the back there, hot dog man, food trucks. Got a teacup ride. I really like that using some of those uh, sort of friends or elves hot air balloon pieces there. Here's a build that's very impressive. It is sort of castle medieval islands. Uh, so it heavily incorporates water down here. Then you kind of go into the mountains and go up the, the mountain path to the different parts of the castle here. And then there's a wizard on top there on the, the left castle. But then there's also this really cool sort of the village down at the bottom with all of the, the brick houses that people live in here. And the trees are also just very, very nice design on that. Look very natural. Here we have a campground. And so this would be, you know, RVs, pull your RV up, park it, enjoy camping for a few weeks here. This nice looking campground. It's like there's some wonderful fires going on. We've got a little bit of English football happening. All sorts of fun amusements there. And then Arctic Exploration. So this is a very cool theme uh, for a few reasons. Number one, it's just very eye-catching. The orange and white, I think, is a really cool, like the colors, because you've got the orange vehicles on the white ice. Uh, it's just really cool. Uh, I also like the different vehicle designs, like the helicopters and the, the treads on the different uh, tractors and things that are moving through the ice. So all of that is really neat. I like this display. You've even got sort of, what, maybe like an oil rig or something here, I believe. And then continuing with a sort of similar, uh, but a twist on that is underwater exploration. Uh, so you see some of that orange and white with the Coast Guard stuff on top of the water. But then I think the best part here is underwater. And uh, during the public times, I know they had some movement going on here. Some of this is... a uh, kind of has motors in it and stuff and can move around but the sunken ship i think is awesome the the big squid shout out to some of those uh older underwater exploration lines that lego has made over the years then here is uh solug i believe that's the southern ohio lego users group and they've got this big uh space display here with a few different uh, space shuttles and spaceships on display. And then you've got like a command sender in here. And then some smaller vignette type builds showing off different space vehicles over the years. So yeah, that's all very cool. The whole kind of evolution of space display there. 
big crane with a hot air balloon on top. I like that one. Seeing those hot air balloon pieces are so cool. You can do a lot with those. You've got a nice little pool. Uh, the hot dog stand is very cool. And what looks like a really fun skate park here. And so then we keep coming around the corner here. See the, the city there real quick. We'll take a closer look real quick at these uh, tanks. It looks like we've got some military inspired, some very patriotic got Lady Liberty leading up here in the front vehicle so quite the interesting array of vehicles there and then here we come around to another uh, massive city train layout with a whole bunch of very impressive buildings some great architecture little details pieces flipped around and upside down and all sorts of things like that to give detailed architecture I love the roof on this building here in the big the big windows appears to be a like a church cathedral type building. And then here we've got maybe some more office buildings, government buildings. I like the little gray windows all throughout that one. Some very cool trains. This purple and white color scheme is nice. That you don't see that that type of colors used very often. Some mixes of browns there. Uh, it looks like you've got uh, Iron Man and Superman on top of the building. I think normally they spin around. And then maybe a theater right there, possibly. Got, once again, a find a minifig list here, so get people involved. There's a standard oil company building. And also the, the lamps and trees and everything just to give those extra details are really nice. Now you'll notice on these buildings here there's no interior. So a lot of these buildings will just be kind of the exterior and just uh, give the, the look of the city without actually having sort of a playability factor inside the buildings. That's pretty common for these big, these big city layouts. Looks like someone here sort of did an expansion on the Palace Cinema set and made it a bigger sort of block-wide building. I like the little stoplights and the custom street signs. And then all sorts of, yeah, you got the old kind of a walled building here. I like this as well. The garden on, on top, sort of a greenhouse there. So that is one of the many impressive city train layouts here at Brickworld Indy. Now we're moving into a few builds that might look familiar from some past videos we've done. Uh, these are some roller coasters here. And so you've got Jurassic World inspired builds with uh, dinosaurs all over. I think you've got some Coaster Dynamics kits is the company that, that makes these. These are done by James Burroughs. We've done more in-depth videos with him on a lot of these in the past. So if you're interested in seeing those in action kind of running more, uh, definitely look more into those videos because uh, he goes into much more depth there. But they are very cool. The way he's able to build these up and get them all running is very impressive. Here's a great layout that is predominantly Indiana Jones. And so most of this is stuff you'll recognize from Indiana Jones movies, but there's also stuff from other movies and TV shows and things like Lawrence of Arabia on the very right there. Uh, then you've got, you know, Temple here. That's really cool. Uh, I love the, the tents from Indiana Jones there. Uh, the Venice Public Library is really nice, along with Snoopy and the, the biplane on top. Here's one of the, the big fight, fight scenes there with the plane in Indiana Jones. And Indy hanging from the, the ceiling there, the warehouse. Uh, and then one of my favorites is this, the World War I tank. I think that's very cool. So yeah, all of those, and there's even some cool, uh, looks like some promotional sort of posters from the video games maybe he's got here. So, you can see all that's some of the older prom promotional stuff from the video games. 
Then we come to some more roller coasters and just amusement park rides in general. Uh, very interesting use of leaf color on the trees there. So purple mixed with brown and uh, sort of a fall Halloween effect almost. I guess the, maybe that's what the Joker's Manor is doing there, turning everything purple. And then we'll move into the next row of builds. This is a Friends Elves layout, kind of a mix. So you've got city streets and everything. You've got the roller coaster. So it looks like there might be a, a mix of sets and custom stuff to create this whole layout. Uh, yeah, very cool. And the colors obviously are, are make really make it pop as well. The, the bright pink rowboats there by the water. I like those. Across from that we have this great farm layout. So we are in Indiana and this is a very typical scene uh, throughout much of the state of Indiana if you have not had the pleasure of driving through our wonderful uh, flat state here. And so you would see something very similar to this but this is a great depiction of it. You've got the uh, you know corn fields on one side here on the right, corn and wheat fields and lots of other things that we grow in here. And then you've got some of the smaller like watermelons and stuff like that. Uh, I really like this. I think it, it goes well since this, this event is held at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. I think it fits with the theme very nicely. Uh, here's a layout. This is the old uh, Life on Mars. You can see the instructions here. So I believe this was inspired by the Life on Mars sets, which is not something you see a lot of. This is uh, not real common, but uh, you can great monorail incorporated in there. And then just very eye-catching because of the like orange and red that is used to create the color scheme. So it really catches your attention. It's got the tubes all over to move men around and aliens around and then even some mixels there in the middle it's very unique i like that and then on this side we've got the butler logo there it looks like some custom brick heads you got disney hercules you got some rick and morty marty mcfly and ash ketchum from pokemon so there you go. Then Bob and Larry from Veggie Tales. I like that there. And coming down here, we have, I believe this is a big uh, Honda factory, this building here, if I remember correctly, when I have walked by it in the past, is the Honda Manufacturing in Greensburg, Indiana. And so there's some photos, I believe, of the real life building that they kind of base this off of. And you can see that they used sort of went with the, the bigger um, base plates on top as the roof sections and then build it out based on the, the photos of the real building. So quite a large layout there, quite a lot going on. Then over here we've got some Technic buildings or Technic vehicles, trucks and cranes. Looks like a lot of fun. Here's some Star Wars stuff now that I think we've shown you in the past. Some of these builds we've done more in-depth videos on. And you can see some unfortunate folks on this planet are about to meet their demise. That's not going to end well for them. While BB-8 here tries to get away. And next to that Star Wars layout is this... Ninjago layout and so this is I think definitely heavily inspired by the the new Ninjago Lego movie that came out not too long ago and you've got the city with different modular buildings and a park uh, with all of the different ninjas mechs here uh, coming out to fight uh, Garmadon uh, and all of his uh, shark minions and with their fish weapons. I, I've always thought it was hilarious how they carried fish around. Um, something about that just has always cracked me up. So I think that's just a great weapon to have. The, the lights are really nice in the, in the lamp posts as well. And another 
train town layout here. Uh, if we go this way, you can see that it is, you got this like coal car here, which I think is cool. Use the different black pieces to give that nice effect of hauling coal. And here I like what they've done with the sort of dark tan plates and tiles uh, as the ground to give it a very earthy look. Brick Model Railroader car here. Shout out to the Brick Model Railroader. Check them out if you want to find some really cool train related kits and instructions. They do some awesome work. Got some more train cars here. Some nice hill work. Uh, very natural. I like that. Coming down to the city portion and construction. Another thing you'll notice if you drive through the fine state of Indiana on any regular basis is a lot of what's going on here. So that's always fun to deal with. And then a wonderful road sloping down. I like that because you can see it's even it's adjusting for the height and tables here. So that's really cool able to incorporate the different table heights into their build. And you've got different stoplights and you got the bridge even at like an angle coming in here, bridge over the the water. So that finishes out that display. Starting with the next section here, I think we have the mosaic section and this is a whole bunch of smaller mosaics of a bunch of different characters. You got superheroes, You've got uh, Left Shark, and you name it, it's in here. Here is Bill Murray. Next to him is Betty Page. And rounding the corner, we've got Van Gogh's Starry Night. And then Rosie the Riveter. I love the sort of 3D effect with the, the Rosie the Riveter here. And then Coming around here, we've got a, another nice, very, very cool 3D sort of mosaic, or built at an angle almost. I believe that's from the Sistine Chapel there, and then Freddie Mercury and Iron Man. So always some some very impressive mosaics. A number of these were these two here uh, were done by E.J. Bocan, uh, who does some great work with mosaics. And then Stephen King's The Dark Tower build here, which has a lot of red flowers, which I think is, is very impressive, just the red flowers alone. Coming around to this side then, uh, we've got a classic space layout. And so you've got the monorail here and some of those old moon base plates that if you've ever seen the classic space sets, you will recognize those, the crater base plates. Always nice to add a little elevation and mix things up a bit on the generally flat space displays. And some Star Wars. It seems like no matter what uh, the rest of the builds are in an area, there's somehow that we'll end up with some Star Wars <laughs> builds there. So you've got, uh, I believe, Endor, and then next to that, Darth Vader making his grand walk through the middle of the troops there. Here's a, a long layout of a snow city, and so this is sort of a uh, wintry city scene, which I really like because it's a, it's a cool twist on the typical sort of city scene that we, we see fairly often. And so it's got all the buildings have white on top because of the snow. There's snow in the parks, people are ice skating, snow on the cars. You can got a little ski hill over here. and lots of glass in the buildings to be able to see what's going on, business fronts and everything. Yeah, I like, the, I like this a lot. So all, all of the white really makes for a different look and style of city layout, which I think is, is very neat. And then following on from that, if we come back here, you can see this is another area where it's uh, it's really cool because the public can can get themselves involved and they were actually able to build a lot of little fish to populate this uh, sort of aquarium looking build here which is empty now 
but uh, tomorrow during the public times, they'll be able to come back and fill that with lots of cool looking fish. And then you can see some twists on different uh, brickheads back there. You can see a really nice elves collection. So lots of cool elves. Uh, the colors with this is just so awesome with the sort of pinks and purples, like darker colors. I really like that. And then behind that here is a build that I really like. This is the first first time this build has been displayed at Brickworld and actually the first time that the builder has ever displayed at a Lego show at all. So he came out swinging here. I love this build. This is the Soldiers and Sailors Monument, which is in downtown Indianapolis, uh, right in the circle area. And so if, you, if you've ever driven through or walked around downtown Indianapolis, you've definitely seen this. And uh, I love... Uh, sort of war memorials and I love monuments so this is just combining the best of everything and I think it's fascinating he even printed out some of the text there uh, from the different wars that uh, Indiana has uh, sent troops to and been involved in um, he got the lamp posts done there with some some cool techniques and cool parts uh, different statues of governors uh, around the edges this the curved stairs are really neat with all of the different tiles uh, the water is, is very impressive as well, getting the waterfalls down and then laying all the, the transclear tiles. And then you go all the way up to the statue on top there as well. So I think this build is roughly right about six feet tall, if I remember correctly. We'll definitely have a more in-depth video with this builder on the channel, so if you want to see more of that. But I just thought this was really cool and instantly recognizable uh, having spent quite a bit of time in Indianapolis. Uh, I thought it was cool to see something local represented like that. Here's a crane that's, uh, this is very, very impressive. Uh, this builder actually sits here for most of the time during the, the public days and will demonstrate how this works. So this was done by Alex Taylor and he's got a remote control that shows how he can pick up pieces here in the, the bottom part. The, the box area here of the build and then moved him to the top and everything actually moves and works just like the real crane. I really, I really like that. Here we've got, once again, a Palace Cinema inspired build and kind of a brick city, train stations. L Lego Land, Lego Store there, some of those old soccer pieces. Here's a tractor power shop. Oh, I like this uh, Great West sort of steampunky train. That's, that's very cool. I have to admit I'm not generally much of a train fan myself, but the, the older sort of steampunk styles like that always appeal to me. I think that's a really cool design. And then Octan, everyone's favorite Lego gas company. And even a fun, as we walk down here a little bit more with the park with all the people in it, uh, looks like maybe an Easter egg hunt possibly. And then the baseball field as well. So lots of fun activities taking place here. Moving down from that, we've got some more massive Technic builds. And so these are built, you can see on top of base plates that have been tiled to provide some terrain. And then you've got like the Porsche here that uh, was an official Lego set. So there's also, they're kind of off, off road trucking over the, uh, <laughs> over the big Lego cars there. So some awesome Technic vehicles and helicopters, all sorts of stuff there. Here's a giant Batman because who doesn't want a giant Lego Batman? So this is sort of a very large, uh, big fig, something along those lines, versions of Batman. Uh, then you've got some local Indiana sports teams here, the Colts and the Pacers. Got a, I believe that's Simpsons layout in the back there. Shout out to Brian Bonahum, who always does a great job organizing these shows. That's his globe there. There's Brickworld going around the top. Always an impressive build. And then if we keep moving around this way, you can see the giant 
layout. So this is a kind of robotics layout run by uh, Steve Hassenplug, who does a lot of really cool work with the Mindstorms and all that kind of stuff. And so this is something that the public can get involved in. Uh, if you watched our video from Gen Con last year, then you might remember us going more in depth with this. So if you want to see kind of how this whole thing works, because it's really pretty interesting, then I would suggest you check that out because we spent a lot of time going more in depth with, uh, with Brian and Steve on that. And here is some cool, you got R2-D2 here, some smaller R2-D2s, BB-8, Yoda. Uh, nice Minecraft display. So this is sort of an interesting Minecraft display. Normally they don't do sort of underground, like when you see a Minecraft display, it's pretty much all on top of the ground. But this has some stuff on top, but then most of it's under the ground. And so they've dug like caverns and caves underneath. Uh, with track and everything to move stuff around and there's guys battling there so I kind of like that that's a little more dynamic and interesting than a lot of Minecraft displays you see next to that is chess and so this is giant chess pieces here you can play this whole game giant Mindstorms chess here is, I believe, Zelda and Link, and then the Triforce. Next to that is Ganon, and so I think these are all from, according to the papers, uh, from A Link to the Past from the Super Nintendo game in 1992. Okay, so that was that section there, and we'll keep moving down here to some really cool stuff. One of my favorite displays at the show. Get to in just a minute here. Tron, uh, but first we've got some really cool castle layouts. And I think a lot of this here is from uh, David Gregory. And got the whole big castle layout here kind of leading the airship and everything, leading into the castle walls with different minifigs and everyone from different eras of Lego castle themes. Then you come out here and you've even got sort of the Ninjago inspired ship there. And all different ships, you get Lord of the Rings and Pirates and Imperial, even the old fishing store in the back there. Uh, then a little Viking village here. I love the use of the ramps there, the, the roofs, that's always a cool technique. winery, lots of, once again, corn and things like that. Now we are starting in this Mtron display that I mentioned, which is about the biggest Mtron display they've ever had. So if you've seen some of our walkthrough videos in the past, they've had Mtron displays, but I think this might be about the biggest. And uh, we'll move through this pretty quickly because we did record a more in-depth video going through the whole thing in detail. But suffice to say, you can see how massive it is. There's all sorts of uh, cool details, buildings, uh, you know, mining vehicles. Uh, there's black lights in it, and so it really makes the gems and everything glow, which is really cool. And a whole bunch of builders, I don't know, like 8, 10, uh, 12 builders uh, collaborated on this and have put in different details. You might notice some familiar looking things like this Millennium Falcon, but in Mtron colors. One of the very important things with this display is that everything stay within the Mtron color scheme and keep it all looking nice. So there's also a crazy amount of monorail track in this display, which you don't see that often because, because monorail isn't always the easiest to pick up, but there's a ton of it in this display. And this giant tower here as well is very impressive. Who doesn't love a nice trans neon green and red tower? Some more ships. This ship here is very packed with men to the point where they're about to fall over the side. Elves, uh, elephants, dinos, temples. This is just some, this has it all right here. What more could you want? I love it. castle there. 
the pink castle in the back there with all the princesses in it very nice here's an angry angry unikitty temple and then a house here uh, that also fitting with the rest of this display also has a lot going on you've got the kind of Egyptian tomb in the back here and then a very colorful sort of rainbow house on top uh, and there was all sorts of cool details in there fully detailed interior and then here is sort of a Robin Hood forest area Doctor Who in the police box there so I like all of that there's there's something for everyone in this display here then we'll keep moving down here and make sure we, we don't miss anything. I, our goal with these tours is always to show you as much of the show floor as possible just so you feel like you were able to experience as much as possible. Uh, this whole thing we have right here is the GBC Great Ball Contraption. When it's not running, it's really not too impressive, so we aren't going to spend the time to walk all around that, but we definitely did record a more in-depth video that kind of takes you through each module, and so keep an eye out for that because that is much more interesting to watch when the whole thing is running. Over here we've got a giant harbor and some taller city buildings. We're getting into like skyscraper stuff here. Uh, the harbor's really cool. I like the, the crane there. And the giant octan building with the green ninja mech on top. Here's some really cool use of lighting. Anytime someone does lighting under the water like that, I always think it, it looks really nice and just adds a nice level of detail to just the bricks sitting there, the blue bricks. So uh, it adds some nice dynamic range to the the whole build when you throw in some lighting under under bricks like that. Again, with the, the red, especially when it's sort of trans clear bricks. I think it's really cool. And uh, wind turbine on a, I think a classic castle base there maybe. You see that ramp sort of going up. I think that's might be one of the older castle bases if I'm not mistaken. Nice, some more nice uh, train layouts. You got the water tower. And as I, I mentioned a while back, you might remember that I, uh, about the, the kids, you know, some, some builds lowering their, their displays so that you can the kids can see them easier and so this is a good example of that this whole thing is pretty low uh, because it's a lot easier for for kids to see it which I think is really great I think then uh, the public can enjoy it more uh, so if that's possible as a builder to be able to display your builds lower so that the kids can can enjoy them and see them better I always think that's cool big train yard here and then we come back around to the harbor and from there we'll move on to a display. These are all done by uh, Rocco Butlier. Um, these are, you know, we've shown these, I think in past videos, definitely tours, and we featured a few of his uh, particular builds, like the bridge you're looking at right now. Um, you can see some, some of the magazines he has laid out here. He's been featured in a lot of different books and magazines. Uh, incredibly talented builder, uh, very cool stuff. And so this is sort of micro scale works uh, and models of famous buildings and bridges all over the world so you might recognize these from uh, many different cities he was just out at the Nebraska Brick Days event and you can see a award here that he picked up there so a lot of Chicago buildings his latest build that I really like is the London Eye and County Hall which is this section right here so then he's got this whole net. Now he added on to some other parts of London he'd already built and has a whole big section of London there. So there's just so much detail. You can look at Rocco's builds, uh, you know, forever and just find more details uh, and just be amazed by the, the techniques he uses. They're so nice to look at and it's always a treat whenever he uh, comes to a show. Over here is a big... A Star Wars layout and this is something that we've shown you in the past so if you want a closer look at this definitely uh, check that out on the channel uh, we have a much more in-depth video that shows you 
uh, this whole build. But yeah, it's just so cool. With tons and tons of minifigs. You don't see battles laid out uh, this big usually. And so the giant mountain there uh, and then the, the giant battle taking place is, is really impressive. Over here, I think we have some more work by James Burroughs. And he has a castle build here all of uh, sort of an amusement park type of thing. He likes to incorporate sort of the amusement park idea into a lot of his builds. So it's got people coming in and watching shows and playing games, doing all sorts of fun stuff within the, the castle there. Then you've got some more Ninjago inspired mechs and vehicles. And then down here is some Oriental Gardens. So very Asian inspired architecture for sure. Uh, the trees are, are really nice. Trees always stand out to me in builds because they add so much nice color and sort of interesting techniques. They really break up a build and add some character to it. Over here we've got uh, a big a big city layout. One thing that's interesting about this is it's, it's built on sort of an island. Uh, and so they it's all built up kind of on rock uh, and then you've got a lot of beach going around the whole thing. So, uh, massive skyscrapers. It looks like there's a train that goes around kind of the main city portion. Some really big green and gray buildings there. I like that orange building. That really stands out. On the right here, we've got Disney Cinderella Castle with some really cool pink and purple colors there. And... Then down here is some more city train layout type displays. Uh, I like the airport. The airport's cool. You don't, you don't see a lot of airports built with Lego. And so all of the biplanes and the, the big jets taking off are pretty impressive. The fire station. Uh, here is a display that due to recent events has become a little sadder. Now with Toys R Us recently announcing that they're closing all of their stores, you got the Toys R Us truck here. Uh, obviously a lot of Lego related memories for many people, myself included, picking up Lego there when I was younger was always fun. Uh, such a massive selection they had there. You could always count on finding something cool at Toys R Us. So uh, they will definitely be missed uh, in the event that all of their stores do shut down. And I don't know, this is like the third or fourth Paula Cinema we've seen here. I mean, it, it's just such a cool set. I think a lot of people like to incorporate it in, into their builds and use it as inspiration for other buildings. And then here's sort of a build up over the tracks here, different bridges and things like that. As we walk to the last section on our right here, you can see some more of the GBC, as I mentioned, Definitely look for a video where it's actually running on the channel and it's much more interesting looking when it's running. Though this module here is fun to look at even when it's not running because of the awesome colors and the way it was put together. So I love looking at that. And then finally here is some more Technic type builds and you've got a whole car shop here as well, which I, I think is really cool with the tires and everything there. So a lot of really complex Technic builds here. Uh, lots of cool techniques. Uh, I like what the builder's done with all of those. So I think that about finishes it out for us here. We will move over to the Brick World banner, because why not? And with the fancy looking, you know, professional photo backdrop. So this is the Brick World banner where people can come and get their photos taken while they're at the show. I believe that covers all of the convention or all of the show floor for us here. Uh, I tried to give you a look at everything that was on display. Um, if you look now at the wider view, all along the back wall there and kind of the side wall is where the vendors are. Uh, so there's lots of vendors, obviously, at these shows that the public can come and buy things from uh, if they're interested. So that is Brick World India. I hope you enjoyed that look at the show and I'm sure we'll be back next year to show you all the cool new stuff that people bring. Thanks for watching.